Hey guys, Buffer Gaming back bringing you another video, and today we're going to cover all of the MP5 builds currently in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, including the blueprints, which we'll review as well. So we've done this type of video for the M4. We covered all the M4 builds, which I believe we had over 10. We also covered all of the AK builds, which I believe we also had over 10 different conversions and variants in that video as well. So with the MP5, we can't make any different guns using conversions, but we can make different variations of the weapon because there are plenty of them. So I won't include every single one because some are very minor details, changes to the weapon, which we could just swap things out for A1, 2, 3 and make things very difficult. So we'll get into the bulk of them. I'll cover the main couple ones here. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So first off with the MP5, it stands for MP, stands for Machine Pistol 5, and it fires 9 by 19 millimeter pillar and rounds submachine guns. So this was developed in 1966. It's been in service since then through present. So let's go ahead and start with the very first weapon here. So this one here, as you can see by my creative class, is the MP5A3. So with the A3 here, this one comes, we have with a, I just threw a compensator on, but the main features of this particular weapon are going to be the, Sure, the Surefire 628 flashlight equipped on the handguard that you can see there when you look under the handguard, right under the muzzle there. If I just preview this so you can see that you have, I have the compensator around and then we have the flashlight there. Unfortunately, the flashlight is unusable, but that is a Surefire flashlight on the handguard built in. Now, what makes this really an A3, we have just the it has a top rail on it, but mainly the collapsible buttstock and the select fire options on this particular weapon. Now we can also, by swapping out, if I just get rid of some of these attachments, if I swap out to the FSS light, now we have an M-Lock handguard, and this is available just by doing this attachment switch. And then also in the Feeling Rusty, Admiral's Pride, and Sand Snake blueprints as well, you can get this M-Lock handguard by default. So that's the FFS light attachment. Also, you have an MP5 a3 with this particular build so this one comes with the adjustable buttstock we can see we have it here as collapsed on this particular build and as i said we have an sef trigger group on this means select fire trigger group and right here we have the mlock handguard so if we switch this out one thing i'll show you if we just go with the base handguard here with the surefire flashlight even though i have a compensator on if i were to swap over to a any any of the suppressors so it works with a lightweight the monolithic and the tactical so we'll throw a monolithic on there now you see we got rid of the flashlight there right because that would stick out and it would be hitting the suppressor so that we strip out part of the handguard and we have the picatinny rail on the bottom of the handguard there so this is still our mp5 or machine pistol a3 variant of the weapon and here just with this particular suppressor on there we have the picatinny on the bottom and we also have the picatinny on the top where i have the sight mounted on this particular weapon and you can see it is select fire there on the left hand side we have select fire option for the sef trigger group on this weapon and what else can we do with this so we'll go over the attachments quick if i were to just swap this one back out for a compensator and i also put a laser on this one so this is really personal preference for this so the MP5A3, I just have a compensator on there for recoil control. And then I threw a five milliwatt since this is gonna be mainly kind of a hip fire build for me personally. And then I also threw on just an aim point red dot sight there. That's more so personal preference. And then with this one, I also had the collapse stock. So if you just unselected this, you could also, this would still be, I believe an MP5A3 as well just with the stock extended on this particular weapon. So we'll go ahead and just collapse that once more. And then I also just threw on the granulated grip tape for aim and stability and aim walking steadiness. So this is again, personal preference. If you're looking for more ADS speed, you can go with the stipple grip tape or maybe even recoil control alone. You want the rubberized grip tape. So that is the MP5 A3. Now, next up, if we back out here, and I'm going to go to back to my creative class. Now, we'll look at the A2 for this weapon. So, the A2, the main differentiation here between the other builds is that we're going to have the classic straight line stock on this weapon. So, that's that thick stock. Now, what this is going to do is give us pros for aim and stability and the con being aim walking movement speed. But again, that because the stock is fixed, obviously, our aim and stability is going to be a little bit better, right? Now, that's the main differences here. 
The other thing that you can see I did is I threw a just an under grip or an under barrel on this. So if we deselect this again, we have that Surefire flashlight back on there. So for the this specific build being the A2, I don't really like the way that looks. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a commando on there. Now what that does is assist us with our recoil stabilization as well as our aiming stability, the combine aim movement speed. So in real life with the A2, we would have a little bit of a different handguard here. It would basically be this, but with that, you see that solid handguard, it would cover over where that Picatinny rail is. So we wouldn't necessarily have any, um, we wouldn't have any Picatinny on the bottom here for a grip. So it would just be Essentially this, but with a closed off solid handguard. No Picatinny rail on the bottom for the attachments on this particular build, but this is kind of the closest we could get. I could also take off the foregrip and then I could put on a monocle suppressor. And this is also gonna give us that different handguard as well, just not with the completed solid handguard. We still have the Picatinny rail on the bottom here. But I will go ahead and just reselect the compensator. That's gonna, again, assist us with our recoil control, con being aiming stability, and aim down sight speed. And I'll throw on that commando foregrip, mainly for aesthetic purposes to stay true to the IRL build, but it's also gonna assist with the aiming stability, aiming, or excuse me, aiming stability, recoil stabilization, and with the only con there being movement speed. So the commando foregrip and the tactical foregrip, I kind of like to run on these just because you're not taking a hit to the ADS speed. Um, it is also just by default a very fast ADS weapon. So again, for this A2, more so personal preferences to fill attachments. The main different, the main thing you need here is the collapse stock and you want to get rid of that surefire flashlight on the handguard. So however you want to do that, whether it's with a suppressor on the standard barrel or just throwing on a under barrel attachment there as well that'll do it the trick also so the other attachments i like to run on this is just a tack light this again is going to assist with my ads speed and my aiming stability and the aim walking steadiness the con being the laser is visible to enemies but it's only visible again when you're adsing so if you're just careful about when you're aiming down sights it really shouldn't be a problem and it kind of looks kind of funky there on the bottom you can see it's on a candid uh a candid mount on that top picatinny rail so but you you as a user don't really necessarily see it because you're seeing your gun kind of like this on the left hand side the other last attachment i have for the rear grip is being the rubberized grip tape again this is just going to assist with my recoil control this is more so personal preference um, it really depends on how you handle your recoil and if you're looking for this additional ADS speed and sprint of fire speed boost here for the stippled grip tape. So really any of these personally, I've just been running the rubberized grip tape for this particular A2 build. And that's pretty much it for the A2, I believe. So now we'll back out and we will select the next one, which is gonna be the MP5 SD5. So for this particular build, the main difference here that's gonna set this apart as an SD variant is going to be the subsonic integral suppressor. So obviously this is the integral suppressor with the weapon and what this is going to do is assist us with our sound suppression, no visible tracers, aim down sight speed, no enemy skulls. Now the cons being the bullet velocity you can see there for the range is gonna take a little bit of a hit, but nothing really major that's a deal breaker. Now because we have an integral suppressor, we are not allowed to equip a muzzle attachment. And then personally, I'm putting a tech laser on here Again, to give us those assists with the ADS speed, aiming stability, and aim walking steadiness. And that con being laser is visible to enemies only when you're ADSing. Now, the other thing here is for the SD is the retractable stock. So here I have the stock is extended. Now you could also do the collapse stock as well. So this again is still a retractable butt stock just with a collapse there, we still have our SD5, A5 here as well. So I'll deselect that since we want it extended. And next I have just a perk to fill attachment slots here being the sleight of hand. So it's gonna assist us with our quick reload. And then for the rear grip, the rubberized grip tape, again, this is just gonna assist with recoil control. So. I have four attachments. You can feel free to put a 45 round mag on here as well if you wanted, or like I said, that collapsible buttstock also. Now, if we put an underbarrel on, 
you can see what it does is throw a Picatinny on the bottom. So it kind of breaks that solid handguard again and we get a Picatinny rail, but overall it doesn't hurt the aesthetics of the weapon. But to stay true to the IRL build, I just did not equip a underbill attachment on this. So that is the MP5 SD A3. So I think I called it an A5 by accident. So this is the SP5 SD A3. So we have the collapsible buttstock extended or you can collapse it in the integral subsonic suppressor we also have the sef trigger group here for the select fire as you can see we have full auto single and then safety is on that as well so now if we were on to make this in sda2 the only change here if i were to just get rid of let's say we get rid of the rear grip tape so the S mp5 sda2 is going to have the fixed butt stock so this is going to be the classic straight line stock this is going to be the pros for aiming stability and the cons being aim walking and movement speed so this is our MP5 SDA2. And again, really all the other attachments are personal preference besides the classic straight line stock and the subsonic integral suppressor here as well. And you can throw your other attachments on there at your own discretion. So if we were to put on a, let's say a holographic, that's how it's gonna look. Still a pretty nice looking weapon right here also. So that is the MP5 SDA2. And now we can also make the MP5 SD5. So this is kind of what I was alluding to to begin with. So let me deselect this. Now the only difference here is going to be that it has a fixed buttstock, a integral suppressor, and then also we would want to select the three round burst. So this would make it an MP5 SD5. So we have fixed buttstock, integral subsonic suppressor, and then the three round burst for the weapon. So this is gonna burst fire toggle. So we'll have three round burst, single fire, and then obviously safety, which we, we don't have a safety in the game. You can just see it would that's what it would be for the SEF, for the select fire trigger guard. So burst, single, those are your options with that one. Now, Next up here, you can also make an MP510. So we covered this in our conversions as well. So the main thing here is the 10 millimeter auto rounds. Really, this is kind of the only attachment that's necessary for this particular weapon. Now, the MP5, or excuse me, the MP510, this is really a, in the 1990s, the FBI, this was designed for the FBI mainly is those 10 millimeter rounds. The FBI was on a 10 millimeter kick basically in the 90s and they wanted this custom built. So this is no longer produced. H&K no longer makes this. And I, they also made a MP540, which was the 40 millimeter Smith and Weston, I believe it was, rounds, which I believe they also no longer make those as well. So that was the, that was called the MP540. And I believe it fired the, if I correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it fired the, 40 millimeter Smith and Weston rounds. So you can see here, just if we view the weapon itself, pretty good looking weapon. And again, those 40 Smith and Westons would make it a MP540, but we don't have obviously the 40 S and W rounds in the game. So the attachments I did for this, I, I like it, this one personally with an M lock handguard. So I did the FSS light. So this is gonna assist us even more with our ADS speed as well as our bullet velocity. And next up, if I back out and go to TAC Laser. So the TAC Laser, again, this is, is more so personal preference. I prefer this on a lot of my weapons, if you <laughs> haven't been able to tell by now. Um, I like this because it is really the, probably the best attachment for the ADA speed, stability, and aim walking steadiness, and it helps me keep my shots on target. The only downside is that it laser visibility. So that's again, only ADSing. So next up for the site, I like this one mainly for the aesthetic purposes with the holographic side in this. So this is gonna give us that precision site picture with the con being ADS speed, but you're gonna get the that con with any site. So I like this particularly with the holographic on there. I think it's very aesthetically ple pleasing and it looks overall like a very solid weapon. So we have again, the retractable buttstock you could 
select a classic straight line for this as well. And that would also give you the MP510. And you could even throw a select fire on this for a burst if you wanted to as well. But the main things here are that it fires at 10 millimeter auto rounds. And you can see just the attachments I have again are the FFS light, tack laser, holographic, the 10 millimeter rounds obviously being key for this particular variation. And then under barrel, I just went for the recoil stabilization of the commando foregrip because we don't get the kick or the, the negative for the ADS speed. So we get pros being recoil stabilization and aiming stability, the con being movement speed for this particular build. Next up, we have the MP5K. So this one we also covered in a conversion video in the past as well. And the cool thing about this is when you change this to this particular weapon, it shows up in game as an MP5K when you swap to it from your secondary. So the key attachment for this are the FFSS Mini. This is gonna be for our pros, the ADS speed and movement speed, the con being bullet velocity and recoil control. The laser is going to be a five milliwatt laser. So this is going to assist with our hip fire accuracy and our sprint to fire speed. But the con here is that this laser is always visible to enemies. So just keep that in mind. But again, this is really a hip fire build. So this is kind of a good one. If you don't want that laser to be visible, you can go with the one milliwatt laser as well. So there's really no negatives to that. It's just not quite as accurate, but there's very little difference between the two. Next, I have the holographic side on here for precision sight picture and the negative being ADS speed. Again, I personally just like the holographic. That's probably one of my favorite sights in the game. And then obviously we want that FTAC collapsible stock. So this is going to be the collapsible butt stock versus the extended. So, whoops, what did I do there? So we'll go ahead and do the collapsible. And that's a key attachment. So that's going to assist us with our movement speed and our aim down sight speed. The con being aim stability and recoil control. And then for an underbarrel, if you look at the MP5K, it usually came with uh, like a very, very unique looking, kind of like, I want to say a fat uh, underbarrel foregrip. So the best thing to replicate that, in my opinion, is the Ranger foregrip. If you're looking for a cosmetic, cosmetically accurate weapon for the IRL build. So the Ranger foregrip also is one of the best foregrips in the game. It's going to assist us with our recoil control as well as our aiming stability and the cons being the aim walking movement speed and the aim down sight speed. So those are all the attachments there. Now the one key thing here is the FFS Mini, um, not quite accurate to the MP5K. I haven't really seen this particular barrel on any of the MP5 builds that I, I've looked at. Um, usually I'll show, when you see the picture on screen, you'll see the difference. It's really a short, shorter, stubbier um, barrel with a, more of an abrupt end. So it's kind of an interesting looking barrel. If you were to throw like a suppressor on this, you can see how, how that cosmetically changes the weapon right there. But really in, in real life, the handguard would come to an end earlier versus you can see the handguard is kind of going beyond where the actual end to the muzzle is. So the handguard's kind of extended a little bit past where it should be. And if we were to take off the sights, you can see there we have pretty accurate front sights. Um, but again, that handguard would need to come to an end right at the end of that Picatinny rail. It need to be more of an abrupt end than what I see here. So those are really the only major changes to this versus the IRL build. But if you have the iron sights on there, it's pretty accurate overall. So those are all of my MP5 builds in the game. Now, one thing to note is that for these particular weapons, the rate of fire on all of the A series in real life is 800 rounds per minute with a muzzle velocity of 400 meters per second. The muzzle velocity on the MP510 here that you can see is 420 meters per second. The rate of fire on the, excuse me, the rate of fire on the MP5 SD series is gonna be 700 rounds per minute with a muzzle velocity of 285 meters per second. And then if we look at the MP5K, which we just covered down here at the bottom of our list, this one is going to have the rate of fire of the 900 rounds per minute and muzzle velocity of 375 meters per second on all of the MK builds. So in real life, there's like an MP5K, an A1, A4, A5, MP5K PDW. And then for SDs, we have SD1 through 6. And for the A series, I believe it goes all the way 
through a five, or possibly even a six at this point. So those are all of the real unique builds that we can make in the game. Now, if we were to make a a five, I think is one that I didn't cover. So if we look at the A, we take our base A3 that we covered, and if we were to just throw on the three round bursts, let's say we'll do it, get rid of that granulate grip tape. Now, three round bursts, that's gonna give us our MP5 A5. And again, we have that Surefire flashlight built into the handguard, so you can kind of change those attachments however you wanted based on what we talked about. And again, the bus stop gets collapsible, so you could even get rid of that as an attachment. You still have an A5 or an A3 if you got rid of the burst perk. So those are all of the real variations we can make within the game. So if we go and cover for my armory, let's go ahead actually and go to, we'll go to a loadout, select a weapon, we'll go here. So for the armory, we have the flood blueprint which is one of the free blueprints that was available and for this particular weapon this is basically an mp5k just with a different stock on it so again this one has a pretty unique look to it has the nice red camo and basically an mp5k we have the ffs mini the forge tech ultralight stock the sleight of hand perk 45 rounds of the nine mil parabellum rounds and then we have an operator foregrip on this particular build so Pretty unique looking, I, I do like the camo. Again, this one was a free blueprint that everybody should be, have been able to get if you redeemed it. Next up, we have the Sand Snake. So this again is that MP5A3 with that, and this one comes with the um, the M-Lock handguard that we talked about. So this is kind of a aesthetic change to this particular weapon. It comes by default without having to change the handguard. We have the M-Lock handguard by base with a base barrel there that we, we saw is the different from the ones that we made. Uh, if I were to go back to our other one, so you can see just using the A2 as an example, the base handguard with a grip looks like this, right? So if we go back to our, our blueprints here, and we'll go to the Sand Snake, so you can see it has by base that M-Lock handguard that we talked about. So this is really an MP5-10 because you have the 10 millimeter rounds. But other than that, if we were to put on nine mils, it would be an A3, I believe. So an MP5-A3 just with an M-Lock handguard. So again, with the 10 millimeter rounds is an MP5-10 with an M-Lock handguard on this. So very similar to the one we covered just with a collapsible buttstock and you have the optical hybrid on there as well and the compensator to help mitigate recoil. Next is the heat cycle. So with the heat cycle itself, again, this is an MP510. You have the FFS mini barrel on here with a compensator, and then you have a closed FSS closed quarter stock and a PBX7 holographic sight on this. And since we have the 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter rounds, this is still gonna be an MP510, even though you have some unique attachments. But this is probably one of the coolest blueprints in the game. And this one I covered in our blueprint series. So this was one <laughs> heck of a grind to unlock, but totally worth it. I think overall it looks very aesthetically pleasing. Again, you can swap all these attachments out for the most part and retain the blueprint aesthetics with this particular one. And then feeling rusty. So again, this is that MP5A3 with the M-Lock handguard. You can see we have the FFS lights and the FTAC collapsible buttstock on this. 45 round of the 9mm Parabellum, and we have the granulated grip tape on there as well. So they're very similar to the A3 build that we covered, just with that M-Lock handguard, which I already showed off. So the, the good thing with this particular blueprint is it kind of has those watermarks, just like we saw in the COD4, that first opening mission for COD4, where they use the MP5. So that's basically the only change with this. We see the SEF trigger group has a little bit of cosmetic changes for let's do this is that famous line from that single player campaign mission. And overall, those are really the only aesthetic differences for this weapon. It's more of a solid black as well, which is pretty cool. And then the last one is point blank. So the point blank, again, this is very similar, if not the exact same as the flood. Actually, it is the same as the flood, just basically with different uh, color schemes and maybe one or two different attachments. So we have the FFS mini barrel for that MP5K barrel, the Forge Tech Collapse Stock on this one, the Fast Melee Perk, and the 45 rounds of the 9mm auto, auto rounds. So making this an MP510 with a short stock with the SSF, 
FSS Mini. So this is the F, part of the FNG bundle, I believe it was. And you can see FNG on there. We got two weapons with that particular one. I can't remember what the other one was, but we did cover it in the Blueprint series. And then we can see just some minor cosmetic changes to the magazine there as well. Those are really the only changes with this one. So you can build any of these blueprints out of these, or the cut versions that are covered out of these base blueprint builds. So that's all of the blueprints available in game so far. Besides, I believe there's one more with a wooden handguard and wooden buttstock, which again is an A3, I believe, just with the M-Lock handguard, similar to the, the Sand Snake that we see here. That would be the Admiral's Pride, I believe is what it was called. So I think it's essentially the Sand Snake, just with the uh, solid stock. We have the M-Lock handguard and it has some wooden cosmetic changes to it as well. So those are all of the MP5 builds in the game. Personally, I really love the MP510, this particular build that I'm showing off here. This is probably one of my favorite ones. And I really do like using this. The 10 millimeter rounds hit really hard in game too, so that's <laughs> always good to have. And this is really just a run and gun beast. Doing that heat cycle blueprint challenge gave me new appreciation for the MP5 and really brought me into that run and gun gameplay that I think a lot of people were used to from past Call of Duty titles. So wrap it up here. So I know this was a long video, but this is all of the MP5 builds in Call of Duty Modern Warfare as of the end of Season 1, just about as we approach here. So we'll hopefully be covering some more conversions or builds for this one in Season 2 based on the blueprints and maybe even more attachments that they may add. So until next time, this is Buffner Gaming with all the MP5 builds. And until next time, Buffner Gaming, 